Hello, welcome to Portal's Portfolio Series, where we have readings and interviews with student writers and published authors from Vancouver Island University and around the country. We talk to them about what it takes to be a writer in the ever-changing world of publishing. <laughs> so welcome to the Portal Magazine's podcast. Right now we're interviewing um, a brilliant poet, Aaron Cook. <laughs> it's Aaron Cook. Cook, okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> 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 okay. nice. I get that a lot. Forgive me for my... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we're here with Aaron Cook, and uh, we're going to be talking about some of his material um, that was published in the last Portal ma Magazine 2020. Um, he's a brilliant poet, and why don't you tell us who you are, Aaron? Uh, okay, so like I said, that's kind of an <laughs> existential question, but yeah. <laughs> um, my name is Aaron Cook. I am a Canadian uh, student at VIU. Uh, originally, I am from Saskatchewan, uh, but I've moved around so much in the country or growing up and stuff uh, that I eventually ended up here. Um, I am a fourth year student at VIU, uh, studying creative writing and English literature. Uh, I don't know what else there's to say. Um, I have a big passion for poetry, uh, literature of all kinds. I love to read, things like that. Um, yeah. Awesome. Um, so I obviously I'm not going to ask you where do you come from because you already answered that. But <laughs> we can go to the next one, which is um, did you um, how did you start how do you started writing? Uh, so as like a really young child, I used to like tell like my mother all these little like spoken word stories like oral stories that I would sort of improvise on the spot using like stuffed animals and my toys and stuff like that. And that's sort of where like uh, like my love of like storytelling I guess started. And I've always had this like wild imagination. I used to love like using like every assignment in school is like an excuse to write a story even if it didn't really make sense to. And I still try that in university, I guess if I can get away with it because my brain works in like a more creative way, I guess, as opposed mm -hmm. to like an analytical one. But yeah, it's, it started really young. I definitely started like, my imagination is always, go always going wild, like even as a kid. Awesome. Um, and um, how, do you, how do your pieces develop now that you're like more of a, uh, an experienced writer do you have like a, a process? Do you think we, you can guide us through, let's say, how you made uh, Gasoline Heaven, which in my opinion is one of the best poems I've ever read? Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, oh, I'm so touched. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so usually uh, my poems start from like a single line that sort of pops into my head or like an image and I write around that. Um, so Gasoline Heaven sort of started in like a unique way, actually. Um, but yeah, it was, it came to me in a dream, actually. Um, I just started dating my boyfriend about a month before writing it. Um, mm -hmm. We were long distance, so that sort of came with a whole house of like, like a whole like host of other challenges, I guess. Uh, basically, I dreamt that he kind of lived near me and we had the luxury of just like going for a drive whenever we wanted. And I was trying to capture this like moment of a dying summer with someone that you maybe might love, also like sort of trying to convey how it feels when you're into like a relationship with someone and it's so new. Um, and the way that it sort of lifts you up and lets you down all at once and how sort of that desire for the other person pulls in you and you're not sure if it'll burn you alive or not. And I was trying to write about the feeling of liking someone so much that they have that kind of power over you. And when you combine that with the dream that I had about just driving around, the gasoline sort of seemed like a natural extension and metaphor to go with. And so it's, that's kind of how the poem like got composed in my brain. That's awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> Would you like to take this opportunity to read Gasoline Heaven? I, I mean, I can. <laughs> since, it's, since it's here, I actually have the magazine open right here. I thought you guys might ask. Um, Perfect. Not to be presumptuous. For the um, viewers at home. Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Gasoline Heaven. In the flush of August, I found you in my driveway, arms draped like fallen timber over your steering wheel. Your eyes were trained on my door, waiting for me to emerge like a spark in search of the wild. Friction, the language of summer, is your mother tongue. We drive in the aimless blue orange of dying twilight, our faces showered with shadows as we pass. There are brief moments of white hot clarity and brilliance, streetlight flames that lick our faces and then fade. We stop for fuel and I watch you stand with spout in hand and I inhale your gasoline scent. You linger in the air like a solvent, dissolving the tinder at my core. This tenuous paradise between us is fragile, new, and bathed in diesel. I'm tied to a pyre. Help us to watch as you light a match. I wait for you to snuff that thin flame in your hand or throw the torch. Either way, I'm immolated for you and you only. 
Very nice. Let Thank that you. sink in. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is powerful. <laughs> Thank you. Aaron, how um how do you feel about the differences that um of the difference in experience one can have but from reading poetry and hearing poetry, especially when it's uh being spoken by the poet themselves? For me, it's been like about like speaking as like someone who actually wrote that poem for me, like saying it out loud is like so strange um, in a way, if that makes sense. <laughs> that's, yeah. I mean, that's kind of a weird response because it's been like a while since I wrote that poem and so much in my life has actually changed since I wrote it. Um, that it's sort of, it's sort of like looking back at like, sort of like, a, it's like a time capsule almost like hearing it out loud now. But I definitely think that there's something powerful in the way um, like hearing a poem spoken aloud, especially by the poet themselves, uh, just because even in like when I hear like poets like reading their work, uh, the cadence of how they speak sort of translates into how they like how they like they read the poem in their head sort of translates to how they speak out, out loud, I guess. And I think that that's something that you don't really consider when you're reading it in your own voice in your head. So I think that um, definitely hearing the poem aloud uh, definitely gives a whole new dimension to the experience. Agreed. Um, so. Um... Do you show by any chance your work in progress to anyone? <laughs> um, yes, but it depends on what stage that the work is at. Um, usually I like to write a lot about like to process things that have happened to me in my life and things like that. So it usually comes out really personal and raw at first. So I definitely um, let things percolate for a while. Um, and usually like before I like share anything or even go to publish anything, it, there's usually like like a month or two of like revising or editing and stuff and once it's like in the moment where I'm not like so caught up in like whatever it is I'm writing about I definitely feel more comfortable sharing with other people but like at first like probably definitely not <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's understandable all right so um how do you manage to fit writing into your everyday life because I know that we a lot of us have like jobs and other things going yeah. on yeah <laughs> um I would say poorly <laughs> uh that's a, probably a really uh, it's probably not a great answer, but um, poorly. I'm pretty, I'm pretty busy. Um, I'm a full-time student and I do work. Um, but my main thing is that I like to um, keep a journal. I take a journal with me everywhere I go to work, like if I'm out on an errand and stuff. And usually like inspiration I find definitely strikes when you least expect it. Um, so I'm always like, whenever I like think of something, I'm like, oh yeah, I definitely need to write that down. Um, and I definitely also keep a dream journal because a lot of stuff does come to me in a dream as I said like the poem that I just re read aloud that one came to me in a dream as well um but it's funny when you keep a dream journal and you're writing in it when you're like half awake it definitely all comes out sort of gibberish when you're reading it when you're like fully conscious <laughs> so it's like okay but so that's definitely it's interesting because that's sort of poetic in a way in itself when you think about it but yeah I think that I think just like I think, yeah, keeping a journal definitely helps with me. It was something that I never did growing up. It's something I just started recently because it's I've just been so busy with all the stuff going on in the world right now. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I find that keeping a journal is it's something that I've definitely just started doing and it's something that has definitely helped a lot. Yeah. I mean, like the dream journal sounds amazing. I think I'm going to start doing that now. <laughs> um, how did you get uh, published the first time? Uh, so the first time it's actually published was in Portal uh, in my second year. Yeah, uh, I think, yeah. I was published in, 29, in 2018 as well. I had a short story and a poem published that year as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to like submit in my like first year, but I was like so shy. I was like, no, I can't. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't put myself out there like that. And then um, in the second second year, like all my peers and stuff, all my classes and my professors were like really urging me to do it. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> and I'm really glad that I did because that was really it was really eye opening experience. It was definitely like being published definitely changed my perspective. It made me think that like, oh, I can actually you know like right <laughs> you know and the, like I, like it's you know it's like an accept it's like a part of the process it definitely felt like a rite of passage for me no definitely i mean like i feel that um getting published and going through the process of submitting is usually sometimes daunting to, for people in the first year or second year because sure. of the fear of rejection so have you ever had any uh work rejected oh yeah absolutely um i would <laughs> say that i've been rejected more than i have been accepted um i think the rejection is a part of the process um one thing I would say is that um, 
I think that like everyone is like has like a definitely skewed view of their work that they think that they're like the next like Shakespeare or the next like J.D. Salinger or something like that so I think that being rejected definitely humbles you especially because writers are some of the most egotistical people out there um, <laughs> is what I would say um but yeah I think it's I think it's like good you can have like a really great piece but I think that um writing that is just half of the challenge I guess or half of the work I think finding the right home for the piece is the other half so I think that um being rejected is just part of the process and it shouldn't really be taken personally you should just keep trying yeah I completely agree with that um so um that being said what advice would you give uh to someone who would like to become a writer let's say like a first year student uh, for like speaking personally for like I think uh with poems and stuff I think the most important thing to do is just to start I guess um but yeah I think that that's sort of generic and I think it's the heart I think it's something that I need like advice even I need to follow sometimes but the thing about poetry is you don't need to experience something euphoric or tragic to write a great poem and I mean sure that can help but there are so many poems out there about so many other things that I don't think that that's necessarily true um you can write something absolutely wonderful about like the most mundane walk you had in the park or something like that and I don't know. To write poetry for me, it's sort of like to exist in a moment and kind of unravel that moment with words and put it back together. And you can absolutely do that with anything that ever happens to you. Like, I would not call myself a especially, like, out there, spontaneous, interesting person. But I mean, I still have been published. I still write poems and stuff. So and I think it's yeah. sort of important to not be obsessed with writing about something that will be, like, regarded as super sensational. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I think that, like, the quietest stuff is the best. Yeah, I feel like a lot of pe people are always pressured to um, create something like a masterpiece in order yeah. for them to like... not everything needs to be a masterpiece, like... Exactly. Um, so, um, is there any other form besides poetry that you enjoy writing more than others? <laughs> so, this is like something I've like, definitely struggled with for so long, but like even just as a writer, I wish I had the patience with myself to write a novel, but that like really is just not in the cards for me, like right now, <laughs> I always... <laughs> I always start and then I hate it and then I start over and for that reason I think that writing short stories is like a lot more my speed. Um, I think there's like a lot more similarity between the short story and the poem. Um, a poem in my mind is like a very brief and short story in a way and sort of a short story is definitely poetic and more immediate and that sort of like appeals to me more as like a poet. So I'm mm -hmm. definitely more drawn to writing like short stories than a novel for sure. Um, are you gravitating more towards fiction or nonfiction? Uh, definitely fiction. <laughs> um, I've tried writing nonfiction and honestly, like, I've tried writing like little stuff that has happened to me like in a bio, like autobiographical way and it definitely like sounds much more boring in like a nonfiction format than it does if I just write a poem about it because I can make it like more vague and like oh this is so interesting like as a poem but uh, in like reality like it's like oh I went to 7-Eleven like you know like <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> Um, well, that being said, can you, do you have any kind of like projects that you can tell us that you're working on right now? Uh, probably nothing you're probably going to see published anywhere in the immediate future. <laughs> but uh, right now I am working on like a small little collection of poems that's sort of dedicated to various people around me. And um, so I think the main takeaway that this pandemic has taught me is that it's okay to be alone with your thoughts. And I've definitely withdrawn a little from people around me that care about me. And I'm slowly emerging back out of that cocoon now that things are start have settled down a bit more and I'm back into a routine and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And those poems are sort of an explanation of where I went like mentally and emotionally to those people. And it's a way of like almost apologizing for sort of withdrawing. And it's something I'm more doing to process like for myself. So again, that's again, like a personal adventure more than like one for like my craft and for like the sake of writing a poem. But who knows, you might see it sometime. I'm not sure. Well, I also keep asking like um, all kinds of artists because like I, um, I know musicians, poets, writers, yeah. actors. How does the pandemic, um, how did the pandemic affect your world? Do you think that, that your work has had anything happen to it because of the pandemic? Is that, um, is that staying alone giving you time to create or has it? Um, I definitely think that like um, earlier, I definitely had much more time to write back when I was like not really working and school was over. Um, for me, my work has always been very introspective in a way and sort of like about the internal world. So I don't think that it, like the themes of my work have changed a whole lot because that's sort of what I was always interested in writing about. I do think that um, in a way uh, it's become a bit more like, I guess I would say stream of conscious is like a way because I definitely have like had nothing to do but just like write a poem all day and I've definitely just been writing down whatever and 
there's been a lot it's definitely been a more of a writing process because I've had like more time to just be alone with like all these thoughts swirling around in my head you know what I mean yeah and yeah so definitely like I find that my work has gotten longer because usually I write shorter poems but it's definitely gotten longer and covering like a wider range of stuff so I definitely had to like cut like I'm definitely find myself cutting a lot more than I used to Awesome. Um, the last thing that I was going to ask you to finish our interview is the following. <laughs> um, can you read from um, your amazing po um, poem, Foreign Policy? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I would love to. Do you want me to like say anything about this poem or? I would love to know um, what inspired you to write it because. Um... Yeah, of course. Um, so this poem I actually wrote uh, shortly after I had moved out of my parents' house for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, so I was definitely in a definitely a interesting headspace in that way. Um, um, so foreign policy, um, I was dealing with the idea of finally and really being like truly alone. Um, that poem sort of personifies people as nations and I was trying to write about my, uh, my own personal sort of like foreign policy in relation to other people. And so like the poem sort of about that I wasn't really anyone else in, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at, uh, to sort of combine that feeling of loneliness mixed with a uh, prideful feel feeling of being like independent finally, you know what I mean? Um, and that manifested in this metaphor as people as countries, I guess. And this one is uh, pretty short, so I think I'll just give it a read. Sure. All right. Uh, foreign policy. I am a landlocked nation. My body is harsh terrain, mountainous, arid, and impenetrable. My frontier reaches for miles, so vast, no envoy could breach its borders, no matter how intrepid. There are no cities, citizens, citadels, just a lonely marble throne that dwarfs its tiny regent. I don my fear like a shroud, no laurels here, and create a realm that refuses collapse. That I don't my fear like a shroud. It's just such a powerful line for me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. We yeah. really, really appreciate it. Yeah, we thanks for having are me. Big fans of, oh. <laughs> of your poetry. <laughs> well, so. thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, and thank you for having it. Well, um, no. Ah, they, <laughs> wait, <laughs> well, yeah. We're all thankful for having each other, you know? Yeah, we're thankful <laughs> for having each other. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Oh my God. So this has been um, Portal Magazine Podcast with Aaron Cook. And um, this is Gabriel Willis Mill. And over there we have a KZU. And uh, thanks for being with us. And we'll see you pretty soon. Thank you for watching the Portal Portfolio Series. Portal is a literary magazine published by the students of Vancouver Island University's Creative Writing and Journalism Department in the traditional territories of the Snenemo, the Kautzen, and the Tla'am and First Nations. For more information about Portal and our portfolio series, please visit portalmagazine.ca.